Lieutenant kind of will give you a good shot at their grandfather. Okay. If, you, if you're okay with it, I've had a great memory. I've just been lucky, uh, even in school. And I remembered people. I think that's a big factor in what may have led me to this. I remembered people and what they gave to others. When I was playing ball in the schoolyard, my grandfather had a cousin, an immigrant man who didn't have much money. He loved to see the kids playing in the schoolyard. His name was Joe, Cousin Joe. And he came by and he'd stick a quarter through the schoolyard fence and say, go buy yourself a soda. It was those human beings that had an effect on me. So my grandfather, the cousin Joe, is still alive in my mind. My grandfather's still alive. My father, mom, all of the people that had a, a positive effect. The people that had a negative effect, they're gone. They're history. The camp was founded in 1947, when I was a male lad of eight. I never wanted to go to sleepaway camp, which was a mistake and came here as a counselor in 1960. My uncle was the athletic director here and he kept saying, come to camp, come to camp, come to camp. I finally did. And I loved the atmosphere. I loved the, the hearing the birds and the trees and the kids and all the different things that go on in camp. The enthusiasm from the children and the staff. And then I realized that it's the kind of thing I'm gonna to wanna to do again and again. He was just a very sweet, considerate boy. He wasn't like the typical boys that have to prove that they're macho. He was just naturally cool, a great athlete. I actually thought that I was gonna play in the major leagues, but the schoolyard was where you learned how to deal with people and situations. I thought that the rewards of interacting with children, coaching a team, teaching sports was going to be worth it. And then I had the summer to go away to summer camp, which my uncle, another one that had a good effect on me, was always encouraging me. He said, if you're going for physical education, you may want to go to summer camp. We came to camp. I finally agreed. We came to camp and I wanted the youngest children because I felt the older ones were camp savvy and would play tricks on me because I didn't know camp that well. So I had the youngest kids fell in love and at that time, Stan was thinking of going to law school. And at the end of the summer, I said, I love camp so much and you love camp so much. Do you really have to go to law school? Maybe we could just do this every summer and maybe one day we could even own a camp. Never thinking that that would ever really happen. What I love to say is, the heck with the rest of the world. This is our world. You get up in the morning and you're at Trails End Environment and you drop all of those things that are, that's on your mind and you enjoy this culture. He always made you feel comfortable. You wanted to impress him. You didn't want to let him down. Uh, he always made you feel safe and he was just a special person to me and, and really to almost everybody I know that went here. Why do you love camp? Because of people like you and your siblings and Rachel and Zach. And it may sound corny, but it's the truth. Stan loved being the head counselor because he loved the interaction with the, the staff and the children. If I see a child, it's not just usually hello, it's something about them. Anyone that knows Stan Goldberg is going to automatically think of his ridiculously incredible memory. Good morning. Hello, Olivia. And how he will always know your name. He'll know your siblings' names. You'll know your, your parents' names, anyone that's related to you, where you are from, and at least one story about, about that. And so in that regard, he always makes whoever he's talking to feel special. Children who never knew each other have now made best friends. Hello, Ella. She's a good friend now? Yeah. Okay, from camp. And you live in Florida, and she lives in New Jersey. That people come from different 
communities never knew each other existed have now become good friends, and camp friends sometimes become the best friends for a very long period of time. He does not forget faces and names, and it's all genuine admiration for them. He wants to know about them, who they are as a person. And then because of that, the, the vibe they're getting the opposite way is just, just remarkable. When he talks about himself, Stan, he won't talk, he, he'll, he'll never pat himself on the back, but he has the greatest gift in life ever, which is he knows when he's gonna leave this earth someday, he's gonna leave this earth with everyone loving him. And who can have, that's the loftiest goal of all that maybe someone could have. And I couldn't even imagine it in my life and what we do, but for him it becomes so natural. This never was in his wildest dreams to own a summer camp. I think he just really was a simple man growing up who was a teacher and an educator and had a passion for children. And he spent his summers at Trails End and just fell in love with it and then brought my mom along. And this is, was a passion and it's what they were meant to do. And it was just years and years of being a counselor, being the waterfront director, being as I remember him just as the boy's head counselor. That's what my dad was always to me. When you look at your life and you can't imagine something, how could you put into words what it's become? And for him, he started out in a background with his father being a mailman in Brooklyn and coming to camp just to have a summer job. And how can you even fathom that this is what the life has been made for himself? These are my boys. Lou Gehrig said he was the luckiest man on earth. That was before I was born.